The first model that we will be talking about uh, assumes the following. Okay, first it is a continuous review. Therefore, your uh, demand happens at any point in time or every time. Second, we have uniform demand. Third, we have instantaneous supply. What does this mean? This means that B, if you remember the parameter B, which is the supply rate, uh, the supply rate is uh, actually infinity, meaning no matter how big or small your order is, your supplier is able to give it right away. And finally, we assume that shortages are not allowed. So for this, let me go to uh, OneNote. Now, the very first thing uh, for us uh, to do in order to model our, our inventory optimization model for this particular assumptions, now for these particular assumptions, is to look at how the inventory graph looks like. Okay, so what I, I will have here is the graph of your inventory okay so this is your inventory in units over time okay and let us say we start at, at an arbitrary point now assuming that we start at an arbitrary point and because this is a continuous review inventory model therefore as we go to the right no as we move to the right from this point we will actually go down how will it go down it will go down at the rate of a if you remember the, the parameter a a is the demand rate okay and because we assume that shortages are not allowed therefore this level of inventory will only go up until zero. And once it reaches zero, what usually happens is uh, we order. No? We reorder a certain amount. And in this case, we, or we, we reorder Q. And because our supply is instantaneous, then technically our inventory level shoots up. By how much? By Q. Okay? So this is Q. Now, once our inventory level is up here, then uh, inventory consumption continues. It steadily goes down again at the rate of A until it reaches again zero. And once it reaches zero, what happens again? We, we reorder again. And how much? We order Q again. And in this case, we let our inventory level shoot up again. And then the cycle continues. This goes down again, and then goes up, and then goes down. Okay? So in this graph, you will see your Q. Uh, tentatively, R is at zero, meaning the reorder point is at zero, and we will deal with uh, the inventory model where we will assume R is not equal to zero, but that will be for a future discussion. So let us assume first that R is equal to zero. Okay? And in this case, the time between two orders in this case is T. Okay? So given, given this uh, inventory graph and given the parameters in the problem, let us now formulate our total cost function. What is our total cost function? Our total cost function, well, actually in the first place, because you see that your inventory graph cycles, meaning every triangle here are the same, okay? Therefore, we can technically focus on one triangle first. Focus on one triangle first, formulate a total cost function, and then try to understand how it will uh, relate to everything. Okay? So, so let me update this total cost function. This is your total cost uh, per 
cycle okay so per triangle and your total cost per per cycle is equal to your uh, ordering cost plus your variable cost plus your holding cost okay now for every cycle how much is our ordering cost remember we do have a parameter k and whether or uh, whether our uh, reorder quantity is high or low your k is fixed and therefore your ordering cost is fixed at k okay next what is your variable cost? Your variable cost in general is your unit variable cost times the number of units ordered. And if you remember the parameter C, C is the unit variable cost, and we multiply that by Q. <coughs> and finally, we, uh, we need to get our holding cost. How much is our holding cost? Uh, we do have a parameter h okay however however we need to multiply h by the total amount of inventory held inside this triangle why total because because h is incurred every time you have inventory and it is also multiplied by the amount of time you are holding the the inventory so uh, uh, maybe to explain this in a better way is by giving you a, a, a quick example with actual numbers let us say you are holding two carats of diamonds for seven days okay so two carats and in this case seven days Okay, and let's say if you remember H, H is $3.5 per carat per week. And let's say one week here is uh, uh, seven days. So in this, in this case, in this case, because you are holding two carats for seven days or two carats for one week, Two carats for one week then the total total number of carats you are holding for the week is two let's say we increase this to just for the sake of uh, an example let's say two three weeks no? because you are holding the two carats for three weeks then we can say that you are ho holding a total of six carats no and this uh, this six carats is as if you are holding for one week and because you are holding six carats for one week then your total holding cost is equal to six times 3.5 because the holding cost per carat per week is 3.5 okay so essentially essentially your total holding cost is equal to your h uh, this h times your total inventory held in the period and for this example for this triangle how much inventory uh, are you holding in total uh, uh, technically if we were to use mathematical terms you need to get the integral of this straight line however buti na lang, this line is actually a straight line because we assume that demand is uniform and linear and therefore instead of getting the area under the curve of this straight line we just need to get the area of the triangle and what is the area of the triangle the area of the triangle is one half <clears throat> base which is t times height 
put your skew. So this is our total cost per cycle. However, we are not yet finished here. What we need to do is we need to get the total cost per unit time. Whatever the unit of time is. Unit of time is. Why do we need to get the total cost per unit of time? Let us say, let us say, uh, remember this total cost is represent, or this, this total cost is the total cost of a triangle. But let us say, uh, let me give you two, two exaggerated uh, examples. No? Let us say in one uh, extreme end, you have a very small triangle, okay? Meaning your order quantity is very low and you, your, your cycle time is also very short, which means you keep on ordering a lot of times. And your total cost here is total cost sub 1. And let's say on the other extreme end, you have a very big triangle. What does that mean? That means you are ordering uh, a lot and therefore your cycle time is very, very long. And let's say your total cost here is total cost sub 2. And let's say, let's say your total cost of uh, 1 here is 1 peso per cycle. Okay? And let's say your total cost here is 1 million pesos per cycle. Which of the two uh, triangles do you actually prefer? It looks like you will uh, you will say that uh, you will you prefer this triangle where your ordering quantity is very very small, uh, such that your cycle time is also short, which means you you will be ordering frequently. No, why? Because if you look at the total cost, obviously one peso is smaller than one million, and therefore because you want to minimize your total cost, you prefer this. Okay. However, what is lacking? What is lacking in this analysis is the amount of time per cycle. And let's say one cycle here, and let, let me exaggerate. No? Sorry. Let me exaggerate. Let's say one cycle here is uh, one millisecond. No? Para, para mabilis. One millisecond, which means this time, this cycle time for this particular example is just one millisecond. On the other hand, let's say for this big triangle, let's say your one cycle is one million years, which means you will or you will just order every one million years. Now that we added this additional um, information about how long one cycle is, then it looks like this one peso is actually not cheap. Why? Because if you were to compare one peso per cycle where the cycle is one millisecond here and you want to compare it to one million pesos per cycle where one, uh, one cycle is one uh, one million years then you actually have to multiply this by a certain amount so that your cycle will also be 1 million years so that the two total costs will be comparable we don't need to do the math if we if we uh, do ratio proportion on this total cost such that we increase the cycle to 1 million years for sure the total cost will be more than 1 million. So what is our point here? Our point here is right now, this total cost per cycle that we were able to get, okay, is just this. It's the pesos per cycle, okay? What is lacking is the amount of time, no? 
we haven't taken into consideration the amount of time. And that is why what I am suggesting is that once we get the total cost per cycle, we divide everything by uh, the number of time or the amount of time per cycle. No? This cancels the cycle and this gives us the total cost per time. Which is a better uh, total cost function to minimize? Diba? So what will happen here is we will have a total cost, let's say 1 million pesos per year. No, uh, Sorry, this is 1 million pesos per 1 million years versus let's say 500 uh, million pesos per 1 million years. And, and because the unit, unit of the two are the same already, then it is easier to conclude that we will always want to go for the minimum. So to, to apply that, what we need to do is we need to convert this into the total cost per unit time. Sorry, let me, let me fix this. Total cost per unit time. Huh? whatever the time is, and we will be able to get this total cost per unit time by dividing the number of time per cycle. And the amount of time per cycle is just T. And therefore, we get this. K plus CQ plus H one half TQ over However, I would like to take note that T, so where T is equal to Q over A. Remember what Q is? Q is your order quantity. And what is A? A is your demand rate. Imagine if your order is 220 carats no, for Mortimer Middleman, 220 carats, no? so 220. And, let, uh, and if you remember the demand rate, the demand rate is 55, then 220 over 55 gives you 4 weeks. What, the, what does the 4 weeks mean? It means that if you order 220 units every time you order, then the next time you will order will be after 4 weeks. Okay? And therefore, in general, T is equal to Q over A. And why are we doing this? Because at this... Uh, as it is right now, this total cost function no, per time is actually a function of two variables. You have your Q and you have your T. Diba? So this is K over T plus CQ over T plus uh, well, H one half Q because T will cancel. Okay, So you have two variables here. You have Q and T. And because it is possible to reduce the, the, the function to a single variable because t is equal to q over a, then it is better to reduce it. So that instead of doing partial derivatives later on, we will just do regular derivatives. So incorporating this equation, we have the total cost in terms of q, no? and this is per unit of time, to be equal to... Uh, Doing this, where t is equal to q over a, we get an a k over q. Plus, doing this, where t is equal to q over a, we get a c. And finally, one half h q. And this, everyone, is our objective function. This is our total cost function and we would like to minimize.